All right, so today we're gonna take the range equation and I'm gonna show you how you can derive it from the horizontal and vertical components of the motion equations. So we know that range or delta x equals v initial squared times sine two theta over gravity, right? We know that. But how do you get this equation? I'm gonna show you that. So. The first thing we want to look at is we want to break down initial velocity into its x and y components, right? So here's our triangle, here's our v initial, here's our vy, and here's our vx, right? So we can solve for vy using sine and vx using cosine. So we know that sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, so Vy over Vi. So we know that Vy equals um, V initial times sine theta, right? And then since we know that cosine theta is the same thing as adjacent over hypotenuse, Vx over v Vi, we can write Vx as V initial times cosine theta, right? So we know that. Now, now we're gonna use the middle column of the horizontal and vertical um, equations to solve for our range equation. So the first, um, the horizontal um, equation is delta x equals V initial times delta t. And then the delta y one is v initial times delta t plus one half acceleration times delta t squared. And now, oftentimes, you can see this written as minus one half acceleration. And that's what we're gonna write this time because depending on what you set your point of reference to, if you say up is positive or if you say down is positive, it really uh, changes which one is if it's positive or negative. So we're gonna say that it's negative. Because we're gonna say that gravity is negative and up is positive, right? So your standard um, point of reference, okay? And now what we wanna do is we want to rewrite this equation so that it is um, in terms of delta y and it solves for delta t. So then we can plug it into here, okay? So, the first thing we can do is we can add this across. Oh, and I should also point out that we're setting this equal to zero. So our change in y has to be zero. Um, the reason for this is because this range equation only works when there is no change in height. If you try to uh, find the uh, change in x for a projectile that falls off a table or a projectile that launches up to a table, it wouldn't work, right? It's only if there is no change in y, okay? So let's add one half acceleration times delta t. So one half acceleration times delta t squared equals v initial squared times delta t. And now since there's a delta t on both sides, we can divide by that. And then because we want this in terms of y, we can rewrite our v initial as this. One half acceleration times delta t equals v, v initial times sine of theta. I should point out that this should have been Vy, this should have been Vy, and this should have been Vx. And the reason for that is because when you break down the um, motion equations into their horizontal and vertical components, um, you're always focusing on the x component of the velocity or the y component of the velocity, not the actual velocity initial. My apologies. So. Now we uh, divide by one half and divide by acceleration, which is the same thing as multiplying by two. Two times V initial times sine theta and divide by acceleration. So we've got our delta T. So 
Let me erase this stuff so we can plug stuff in. And then, um, I'll just rewrite our VX. So, we wrote that our VX equals cosine theta times V initial, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the stuff that we solved for. So our VX we solved for here, and then our delta T we solved for here. And we're going to plug that stuff in to our uh, equation that solves for delta X, which is our range. So delta X, let me write it in green. Delta X equals cosine theta times V initial, just erase this, and then we plug in our delta T times 2 times V initial times sine of theta, all over acceleration. Now, if we compare this to what the range equation actually is, I mean, it's pretty similar, but the only difference is it's a little simplified. So, first let's deal with the two velocity uh, velocity initials. So delta x equals cosine theta. And then we can just multiply these two together to get v initial squared times 2 times sine theta all over acceleration. And then there's this nifty little trigonometric uh, property that says that cosine theta times sine of theta times 2 is the same thing as sine 2 theta. If you don't believe me, look it up. Alright? So, what we can do is we can take our equation and just simplify it some more. V initial squared times sine 2 theta all over acceleration. And now, if you compare it to our um, our known range equation, um, you'll notice that everything is the same except for the variable for gravity or acceleration. And in the terms of the projectile motion problems that we're going to be doing, you can really just say that the acceleration is gravity. And the reason for that is because gravity is always going to be acting on these projectiles. So acceleration is going to be downwards to the ground because that's how gravity works. And that's how you derive the range equation.